Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys another character that I have been working on this league. Uh, I'm still playing the Righteous Fire character. He is level 97, I believe. I would be like 98 or 99, but I have died quite a few times attempting um, just some really crazy, rippy Guardian content uh, on stream. So I wanted to make a character that was pretty good at bossing. So if I decide to push my Righteous Fire character to 100, I have another guy I can swap on to do some really, really easy bossing. So that's where this character is supposed to be. At the moment, I have him more designed for map clearing. Um, as you can see, he is the level 89 Marauder with a fidget spinner as a weapon. Um, for some reason, the character MTX, I think, actually looks pretty sick, and I don't really have any MTX on, except for my shield to kind of go with the flow. So this is my Blade Blast uh, Blade Faller that I play right now. Um, I've invested like five to 10 exalts into this character right now. Uh, obviously, to, to replicate what I have right now, you do not need this much investment. It's just I've got currency to spend. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in a map real fast. The character's level 89. I'm still working with a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of life nodes to fill out on the tree. Uh, and we'll talk about the character in a minute after we get this done. I haven't really run much red tier content. But for the sake of this, I just figured let's just go ahead and pump in a T13 map here. I'm going to force on a legion. My flask setup is not optimal at all. Uh, I do need to pretty much drop this life flask. It doesn't really provide me with much use at the moment anymore. Since spike damage is uh, very crazy. Oh, yeah. So I don't actually need to use... And I'm sure a lot of people that play Blade Blast, Blade Fall know this. I don't actually need to, like, Blade Fall very often at all. I just pretty much Blade Blast most mobs. And then the explosion uh, pretty much from there kills most things. So for Legion, we wait for our buff, which is coming up right there. We pop it, and that's pretty much most of the Legion is cleared. I cannot do this yet. Oh. Oh yeah, like pretty much most of it. Oh, it's so satisfying. Okay, where are you? There you are. Enjoy. Good, good, good. There's another Legion. Nice. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I guess we can do boss first. I haven't really worked with uh, optimizing the damage for a single target. Like I said, right now we're just focusing on map clearing. Um, like if I crafted a better helmet as an example to get conch effect for our blade fall, I'm sure our bossing would go much quicker. Um, but for right now, this is more than enough. Okay, that buff is wearing off, so I'm just going to wait just a second. I don't really have to do this. It's just fun to kind of, like, min-max it. My mana is gone. Perfect. So tap this, and boom. Although I didn't have Ellie Overload for that one, so that kind of sucked. Oh god, this Grasping Vines is... Oh god. <laughs> no thanks, dude. The Proximity Shield? Okay, there we go. Alright, I'll just leave this stuff after. So, to go ahead and cover the character and pretty much how everything works, um, 
you get an explodey chest, which this is not even like an elevated explodey chest. Elevated explodey chest would go from 3% of physical to 5% of physical. Uh, and that 5% would make such a massive difference for chaining explosions for me specifically. Um, so that is one thing if you want to get like even much faster clear, elevated explosion chest would be super, super good. So to cover essentially what we're doing, um, you want to grab yourself a weapon kind of similar to what I have. Now I crafted this from scratch because the way our build is played, we are not using elemental overload on the tree and I'm not going avatar of fire. So to save myself a lot of points, I decided on crafting myself uh, an oscillating scepter, which naturally grants LE overload. The most important thing is the gain 20% of physical damage is fire and the fire roll. Uh, it's actually pretty easy with Harvest to force craft the plus one physical spell gems. So the plus one physical spell gems is more for single target. For clearing, you want that physical roll and you want that fire roll because the fire roll works for your explodey chest when you convert it to fire, whereas spell damage will not work for it. Uh, and the 20% of physical as extra fire will work because of the way physical scaling works. Um, so this is a super, super good weapon for that example. Uh, and inside the trigger, I have Stormbrand, Cold Snap, and Wave of Conviction. This is to apply exposure, this is for frenzy charges, and this is for uh, elemental overload assistance. I don't actually know if this is needed because we have all the other stuff, but I'm just used to it from like Righteous Fire. Uh, my helmet, nothing super good right now. I do want to try crafting a conch helmet so that I can move my blade fall to that setup. For now, it's just life res and physical damage from its taken as fire. Uh, I have a Rise of the Phoenix at the moment because I will be uh, attempting to run Righteous Fire on this character later. At the moment, I have 85 max fire res, and that synergizes with all the physical damage taken as fire, and then we can run Righteous Fire, and then that gives a massive multiplier um, to our uh, Blade Blast, which is pretty much the sacrifice for wearing the shield. In my helmet, I've got the Flesh and Stone Enduring Gry and uh, Divergent Herald of Ash. The Divergent Herald of Ash gives it 20% AoE. I'm not sure how important this is for chaining stuff, but I figured since the Herald creates like the burn, the bigger the AoE, the more likely it is to like attach itself to something or have something kind of enter proximity, which then can create the cascade effect again. Um, <clears throat> Arcane Surge Flame Dash, and again, nothing here is super optimized. This character is like a big work in progress. My boots, I'm actually in the middle of crafting right now. Um, as you can see, they've got 48 cold, 30 lightning, 35 movement speed, unaffected by shock ground. I could remove unaffected by shock ground and slam with uh, augment fire, 1-2% to maximum fire resist. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. It really depends on how much sustain I guess I have after running Righteous Fire. I do want to get myself a, I believe it's an Elder Belt with uh, life recovery. Uh, I think the life recovery will help a ton since I think it also affects your life leech, which works so well. So you get recovery from your endurance charge scaling slash life regen scaling, which helps mitigate your righteous fire. And then at the same time will help increase your leech speed. So I'm super excited for a very defensive belt. Um, gloves, I don't really have anything special here. We're just going to get chaos resist on gloves and then that will nearly cap our chaos res. So that's going to be awesome. And then our ring, I have... I've been using Essence of, let's see, I forgot exactly what it's called. It's this Essence here, Horror Delirium, don't remember what this one's called, sorry. But essentially you can get 10% of physical damage as extra fire. So I grabbed myself, I actually found this one, it's a Fractured T2 Dex mod. And then I was slamming um, with physical as extra fire on the Essence because I have a locked in suffix and now I have a locked in prefix. Uh, and then I pretty much just had to mess with the rest of the rolls, and we ended up getting something like this. Then, this is a flammability ring that I am working on crafting as well. Um, what I can do with this is I can actually do remove cold, so that will leave me with two suffixes, and then I can add in augment lightning or augment, probably augment lightning, or sorry, augment cold. Um, could even do like replace cold with cold, I think, for this instance. And I have a good chance, well actually no, because I would have, no, no, I can't do that one. Because then I could get a prefix for cold damage. But I could do it for suffix and I could get cold resist as a suffix. So anyway, harvest, pretty cool. Uh, and then to go over the blade, la uh, blade blast links, I currently have awakened fire penetration, uh, elemental focus, intensify. I'm not sure if I like intensify or not. I had a lot of recommendations on using intensify over in KOE, so I've been trying it. 
hard to really tell, um, to be honest. I may end up just using an Awakened Increased Area of Effect later. Uh, then I've got the Blade Blast, the Inspiration, and Control Destruction. Um, for this chess piece, it would be so perfect if I essentially end up working on a new chess piece, or I just kind of brick this current one where I can use an Awakener Orb and transfer Crusader plus, is it Warlord? So I can get the Fizz taken as fire, and I can have the Reflect Boom Boom. Or I could just maybe keep with what I have right now, and I don't know, I'm not really sure yet exactly what I'm going to be doing with the chess piece. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to sink a bunch of currency into. It's probably going to be a chess piece because it's, it's just such a massive survivability increase if I could get like a life roll on it as an example. All right, moving on to the, uh, the tree here. As you can tell, I have involved myself with some Cluster Jewel shenanigans again. Um, so let's talk about the basics. Pretty much branching out through here, through armor. Kind of probably should use a granite flask as well because of all of our armor scaling we have from the tree. Um, but yeah, so right here I have a Watcher's Eye. 10% of physical from hits taken as fire. This is like 40 chaos you can grab. I also got a non-channeling skills have minus 10 mana cost. So I paid like an extra exalt for the clarity roll. Um, but I don't really know if it helps. I'm using an enduring mana flask right now, but I figured maybe late game I could fix my mana solutions and just run a level one clarity. And that would actually be really sick if that ends up working. Uh, yeah, so I've got the Scion Life Wheel to fill out, but for now we're not touching that. I've got Combat Stamina if we plan on actually running Righteous Fire. Uh, I've got like this Life Regen node over here. Moving across, I eventually would like to drop this Dex node. Uh, if Mana Costs are too heavy, I can also go Tireless. So over here we have the Thread of Hope. The Thread of Hope hits Arcane Capacitor just to help with mana, although technically I don't really think I need Arcane Capacitor since I'm running an Enduring Mana Flask now. I've got the Divine Wrath, Divine Judgment, Divine Fury, um, and then it also hits Sanctum of Thought, which is more armor scaling and gives us reduced extra damage from Critical Strikes, which is pretty nice. Uh, over here, same thing. The only reason I'm picking up like Sanctity is for the Life Regen to run Righteous Fire. Uh, I have picked up Precision for the Dex. Cast speed makes the build field more smooth. Movement speed, I really like. Uh, I've got the area scaling here. Coming down, cluster jewels. So I decided to opt out for physical cluster jewels. I did a little bit of looking on, on PoEDB. Physical cluster jewels have three things that are usable for us. You've got force multiplier, which is fizz with chance at double damage. And then there's also a 10% of physical gained as extra chaos. And then there is... Iron Breaker, which is just essentially a big physical node. Not really super crazy good, but for now, this all just kind of helps chain explosions until I get better gear. Um, so that's why we're using this. As for our medium clusters, I decided to go with Towering Threats. Uh, towering Threats give life and area scaling, and the base for it is area damage. So I've got Towering Threat here. My small jewels ideally would be Fettel. But since Fettel runs like, you know, 100 plus chaos for decent rolled ones, I just decided to go with the budget version until, you know, I decide I actually want to invest more into this character. So I just rolled Towering Threats on small, which is, you know, the two chaos or something that you can buy off of people. So then over here, we've got another Towering Threat with a Towering Threat. Uh, moving down, we've got the Force Multiplier, Iron Breaker, Towering Threat, Towering Threat, and Towering Threat. These jewels run literally between 5 to 10 chaos. The only reason mine were a little bit more expensive is because I prioritize finding uh, resistance on every single one of my jewels. Um, as you can see here, I've got like cold res here, uh, cold chaos, uh, chaos elemental. Up here we have chaos lightning, uh, all attributes, chaos increased damage, etc. Also, what's nice is I keep forgetting that you can harvest craft your uh, your cluster jewels as well. So it's usually pretty easy to like force a life roll on them. All right, next up to cover a little bit more complexity, um, we have magmatic strikes. So this gives us 40% of physical is converted to fire. Then chieftain ascendancy gives us 50%. So that puts us at 90% of physical converted to fire. Maybe I'm 95 actually. No, no, 90% converted to fire. To get the remaining conversion, I think all I have to do is get my gloves. So I guess that's ideally where gloves would be. Um, so the gloves would fix the 
90% basically make it 100% fire con or physical converted to fire. So next up, we've got Tempered by War setup. Um, this is the same exact setup for the Righteous Fire build, where we use a Lethal Pride with, who is it again? It is the Rakaita. So Rakaita Lethal Pride gives you Tempered by War, which makes your Cold and Lightning, 50% uh, of it hits your Fire. That's the reason why we're scaling High Fire Res, which then allows us to run a High Righteous Fire, um, which gives us a damage multiplier. It's kind of interesting. It's like going low life where you get pain attunement, except this one is like instead of going low life, you get high fire res and life regen, and then you get righteous fire. Um, so pretty excited for that. Because of the positioning of this, it's actually really nice. We get to hit like Juggernaut. So I've got burn damage on Juggernaut, which doesn't really help me. I've got physical damage on Stam uh, stamina, which is actually really good. And barbarism has melee crit, so that's kind of useless. It would be sick if I kind of like was buying new jewels or is like re-rolling because there's one two three i can even hit over here on the affixes like this has a uh, life roll so i'm pretty excited for like all the future possibilities for the min maxing in this section since these are like usable nodes as well and then we have the instant um enduring cry via call to arms so we get to put it on our left click so yeah that pretty much covers the uh the character right now I'll go over my Uber Lab here in just a second. I cannot do this yet. So I started off with Nahamu's Flame Advance because it gives the 50% of physical damage converted to fire. This pretty much allows us to level right away with, you know, conversion. Um, it felt really smooth. Well, it felt a little clunky to level with at the beginning um, because you're constantly spamming Blade Fall and then Blade Blast. However, uh, as you get higher level and you can just start getting more clear you can pretty much just convert to straight blade blast but leveling was still not really a problem it was not the fastest leveling up i will agree i used holy flame totem with plus to physical gems and then uh ended up going blade fall i believe at 28 and then you don't really need to change anything you're pretty much just blade fall so after i grabbed nahamu's flame advance i grabbed Velako's storm embrace just because I wanted endurance charges throughout leveling in the axe to be a lot more tanky since the build didn't feel super good at the beginning. So this kind of really fixed it. Then my Merc Lab, I grab Tassalo's Cleansing Water. So by the time you're entering maps, you have a bulk of physical damage converted to fire. And then the recovery roll is actually really nice as well. And then down at the bottom, you get Hinokora's Death Fury so that by the time you're in mapping, you get a lot more damage and you get the good sustain. So that's kind of what I did for that. Yeah, that's pretty much about it for now for the character. Um, like I said, we're rocking 5.5k life, but we can easily hit over 7,000 uh, with this setup. I could try rolling life on pretty much all of my cluster jewels uh, as another one. And, I mean, it'll all just make a really, really big difference as we start leveling up and kind of min-maxing our character, fleshing out and getting the conversion on our gloves, maybe going for a helm enchant. There's just a lot of really cool stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Um, I'll post the path of building in the... Actually, I can't post the path of building in the comments because of what YouTube has been doing of recently. Um, so if you want the character, you can go ahead and go to my stream and type in... Um, uh, blade Blast! Exclamation mark, Blade Blast! And Blade Blast will bring up the build guide for you. Uh... Other than that, that's unfortunately all I can do. I'm not allowed to post it in my comments. So anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, and I'll catch you guys all later.